Hey everyone, it's Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and welcome to Hockey 101, the art of faking. Dictionary.com defines fake, faked, or faking as to prepare to make something specious, deceptive, or fraudulent. What? I'm so confused. That could mean so many things. If I think of faking in other sports, I may look at it from a different perspective. When I search faking in soccer on YouTube, look what came up. A ton of faking injuries. I didn't know it was such a big thing. Man, these are hilarious. But I'm not talking about that kind of faking. I'm talking about when a player completely undresses a defender and makes him look, well, silly. As a former NHLer and not so good defenseman, I know all too well what that feels like as I had to try to defend the likes of Mario Lemieux and Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I pulled the groin just thinking about him. Specious, which is a word I've never used before in my life, I believe best describes faking. It states, it's pleasing to the eye, but deceptive. So let me see if I'm reading into this correctly. You kinda can be sneaky, almost lying, and not get in trouble for it? Yeah, and if you get really good at it, crowds go crazy. How cool is that? I'm in. You see, when you have the puck on your stick and are approaching a defender, you have to think of yourself as a salesman because you're trying to sell the defender on one thing and one thing only, and that's the fake. And if they pull out their credit card and end up buying what you're selling, well, this is the kind of stuff that happens. But before you can perform anything remotely close to what you've just seen, we first must start with the basics. So without further ado, here is the art of faking. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And if you like what you see, do coach a solid and share it with someone in your hockey circle. I'd appreciate it. What I'm about to show you is exactly the faking progressions I use when working with players just like you or your son or daughter at my training facility here in Minnesota. So let's begin. For this first sequence of faking drills, you'll be faking from foot to foot or line to line. What the lines do is give you visual stopping markers for each fake. Before you begin, make sure your feet are lined up on the grid where the toes and side of your feet are touching the lines. For this first drill, I'll begin with faking from forehand to backhand, stopping the stick on the blue line for the fake and also the reset. Flip over to the other side and now fake going backhand to forehand, again stopping the stick on the blue line for the fake and also the reset. This is important to know, that is, if you have top hand hip lock and are faking to the forehand. If I go back to where I'm faking to the backhand, you see how my stick is parallel to the blue line? When you have top hand hip lock and are faking to the forehand, do you see how my stick is angled differently than it was when I faked to the backhand? What happens if the puck doesn't hit the center of the blade, players will lose it off the toe. What you need to do is give yourself a better receiving angle and we do this by pushing our top hand across the body. Do you see how my stick now is parallel with the blue line? Same as it is when I fake to the backhand side? If a player is struggling to figure it out, I'll bring them down to ground level so it's really easy for them to visually see if their stick shaft is lining up with the blue lines. Emphasize pushing that top hand across when faking to the forehand. Finish this sequence up by combining the fake to the forehand and also the backhand while standing up, pushing the top hand across the body when faking to the forehand. I hate to say it, but if you're faking like this, unfortunately, you won't be faking out any defenders anytime soon. And why is that? Because it's just an arm movement and that's boring. If you're gonna become a master salesman, you need to become more animated and make it a full body movement. And you do this by adding two very important components to the fake. The first is the plant to one of the legs bending the knee. This is where we load the leg with power. More on that shortly. Do it with me a couple times. Plant, 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 plant. Nice work. The second component is a little Patrick Kane, Connor McDavid, and Johnny Goudreau shake and bake. You accomplish this by bringing one of your ears closer to your shoulder, really quick and back, like this. Now let's put all three parts together, going forehand to backhand, adding the plant and shake and bake with the fake. You can see now it becomes a full body movement where now everything's moving from one side to the other in unison. When going from backhand to forehand, remember to push that top hand across the body so the shaft of the stick is close to parallel to the blue line. 
With every fake you make, the plant is vital in order to be successful for this very reason. Almost every mover fake has four basic elements. Number one is the setup. We slide the puck to our faking pattern starting position. Number two is the fake. For this example, we're going to fake over to the backhand side foot. Number three is a lateral separation. And number four is an acceleration around the player trying to gain inside position. These four elements also apply when you're in alone on the goalie. The only difference is, is that the lateral separation is shorter and the acceleration is replaced with a shot. Here's a quick tip regarding lateral separation. If I'm a defenseman, this is what's called the defenseman's stick zone. This is where the D can knock the puck off your stick and most of the planned moves stay out of the stick zone. One way you can make it really difficult on a defender to knock the puck off your stick when separating laterally involves the bottom hand. You see, when most players make a fake and try to go wide, their hands don't move other than from in front to outside the body. Now look what happens if I make the fake and I go wide but now I'll bring my hands together, I gain two feet of reach. And when I accelerate around, then they go back to the dribble position. Next I add a quick one-two dribble before the fake, but first you'll need to put down two more tape markings next to your center dribble line and also a couple on the forehand and backhand side of the body. I start players going forehand to backhand and the song they'll be singing in their head is one-two fake, reset, one-two fake, reset. Then do the same pattern faking from backhand to forehand pushing the top hand across the body on each fake. From there we'll progress to faking forward on the forehand side. Make sure you're sitting down a bit on the fake and dipping the head and shoulder forward. When faking backward, concentrate on turning your shoulders and pushing the top hand back in line with your forehand hip. Then flip over to the backhand side and repeat the same progressions, starting with faking forward. Focus on bringing the top hand forward as far as you can. And when faking backward, really turn those shoulders and bring the top hand as far back as you can. Now we'll go behind the body, faking to the backhand, dipping the head and shoulder, and then fake to the forehand, really turning the shoulders and pushing the top hand to the forehand side hip. For the remaining diagonal patterns, I've combined the fake forward and backward, so instead of resetting, just go right into your 1-2 fake, 1-2 fake. When you get to the backhand side behind position, just make sure that your toes are facing forward and it's your shoulders that are doing the turning. Whew. That's a lot of information. Let's review what we learned. Almost every mover fake has four parts. It begins with the setup. We move the puck to start the sequence. Number two is the fake, where we have a good head tilt and knee plant loading the leg with power for number three, which is our lateral separation where we bring our hands together, avoiding the stick zone. Number four is the acceleration around the player. Remember when faking to the forehand to push that top hand across the body so your stick is parallel to the line. Well, there you have it. I hope you learned a few things about faking you didn't know before you watched this video. Again, if you liked it, please give it the thumbs up and don't forget to share it with someone in your hockey circle. I sincerely would appreciate it. Lastly, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next video that comes out of this marble. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.